Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we are going to be talking about the Joe Biden um, cancer cure promise and the sincere one-term fail path, which is a future path that where we explore what can occur from Joe Biden's cancer cure promise. All right, so on June 11th, 2019, Joe Biden said the following. He said, I promise you, if I am elected president, the, the most important thing you will see change in America is we will cure cancer. He made an unequivocated promise that his election as president equals cancer cure for the entire world, right? Uh, I've been studying politics for 37 years. I, I started um, American political science. I've been studying that for 37 years. When I was 12 years old, I got a um, a, uh, a paper route, and I've been you know I started reading the political the, the political section of the paper then. And in 37 years, I've never seen a promise like this. Uh, it is without a doubt probably I think it's the most ambitious promise that's ever been made by any American politician. Right? It, it dwarfs everything because. Um, cancer, you know, it, it has nothing to do with the Democrats. It has nothing to do with America. It, it is a global promise, right? Uh, cancer doesn't have a red, white, and blue sticker on it. It, it, it. it slays people across the globe at a rate of approximately 8 million people per year. It's a global killer, right? It, it's lasted for three millennia. This is a promise that now exists in the 2020 campaign, you know, crying out, you know, Joe Biden has shouted to the skies, if I'm elected, cancer is cured, right? This, it's huge. This is, you know, basically, this is a massive hinge, you know, in the election, in the primary election, right? So what we're going to talk about today is, so there's, there's two sources for this, okay? There's rhetoric, right? So rhetoric is, uh, language that is designed to persuade or impress an audience. It is frequently considered to be lacking in sincerity and meaningful content. Okay? That's the definition of rhetoric. So this is rhetoric, all right? Or, which, and if it's rhetoric, there's huge problems for Joe Biden, Joe Biden's dynasty, and, um, and for, uh, and, and for also for the Democrat Party, okay? I think that's, yeah, so that's one path. We're not actually going to talk about that path today. We're going to talk about the best possible, one of the best possible path, paths for Joe Biden and see the danger existed even in that path, right? So what we're going to talk about is what if the source is sincerity? What if Joe Biden is sincere? What if he actually has been talking to researchers, doctors, uh, hospital leads, uh, health coordinators, and they and and he believes right sincerely that he can deliver that we're close to a cure uh, for cancer now. And if he gets in as president, he can pour a bunch of money into this problem. He could shift focus of the entire nation exactly the way we did when we raced Russia to the moon between 1963 and 1969, right? So that he can shift the focus of the entire nation and bring to bear dozens of companies, entire industries, and actually cure cancer, not for America, but for the entire world. There's no, there would be no ability for him to say, we've cured cancer and that, 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 that cure stays in America. There's no, there's no possible way that could happen, right? And, and as a Democrat, I don't even think Joe Biden would even say that that was his plan, right? So, all right. So basically, that's what you have, right? So let's, let's say he's sincere. Okay. Here is the sincere one-term fail path. And this is a distinct possibility now that Joe Biden has, you know, hatched this dragon egg, right? I think that, that's what happened on Tuesday, June 11th, 2019, is Joe Biden hatched a dragon egg, right? And now there's this tiny dragon that is sitting next to him, which is the cancer cure, right? And he's just kind of petting it on its scales, right? Well, the problem is that dragon's going to grow, right? And on January 20th, 24, the end of his first term, what's that dragon going to do? Is it going to be imprinted on him and now he has control of it? Or is that dragon going to turn 
and burn him to death, right? That that's that's what we're looking at, right? It, it's it's incredible. This this is a hinge in the primary. It changes a lot, right? Because yeah, and so all right, stay focused here. All right, so basically, let's look at the sincere one-term fail path. All right, so Joe Biden gets in. He's actually sincere. We're going to assume that. We're going to assume that. We don't really know yet, right? We don't know if this is sincerity or rhetoric. We don't know, right? He hasn't produced any evidence to, to, to point to the fact that his promise was anything but rhetoric. But he has a little bit of time, right? Because we're only, you know, it hasn't even been a week. So I'm going to give him the grant. Right? So let's assume that he was being sincere, right? So here's what happens. Joe Biden is, promises a cure for cancer. That's already happened. Joe Biden wins in 2020, okay? There's four years of dedicated research, and there's a clock. There's now a clock on the cure for cancer, right? America abandons safe mode and goes into a head-on, full-out effort to cure cancer in four years, right? Okay? That, that, that's what happens, right? Now, here's the next one. There is one single misstep, right? Just in one laboratory, one set of vials, you know, being transported is destroyed in a car accident or something like that. And it sets the whole plan back 18 months, okay? So now that the, the best researchers, the best doctors, the best hospital leads, the best, best health coordinators say, hey, we failed. 2020, you know, we, we were planning to have can, can, cure, cancer cured by 2024, now we're expecting that if Joe Biden remains president and this entire priority is not interrupted, right? And by the way, at this point, there's most likely will have been researcher or doctor deaths attached to the race for cancer because the safe mode would have been abandoned that way. And we've already seen this. When we raced, when we raced Russia to the moon, Grissom, White, and Chaffee, three American uh, astronauts burned alive they were killed right in 1967 when there was a, with the Apollo 1 launch fail okay it's very likely that by 2024 with this attempt because safety precautions have been reduced not abandoned but reduced they will act when you, when you go into race mode safety safety precautions are reduced right because because safety mode safety mode you know has been switched has been set at a lower level because this has to this has to happen in term one of Joe Biden's um, Joe Biden's presidency because he didn't ask for a term two in his promise. He just said my presidency equals cure cancer, cancer cure for the entire world. Right? That that's what he said. Right? So so basically, and that you know, it's not it's not equivocated. There's no. This is why we're talking about this. This is why I keep talking about this. This is an unequivocated promise to cure cancer directly from his election, right? That, that's what happened, right? It, it, I feel like, you know, I feel like this is a fiction. It's not. This actually happened. It's, uh, it's amazing to me that we're here and we're talking about this, that an American politician would say, my election equals the cure of cancer. It seems outrageous, right? But we, we're, we're seeing where this ends, right? Okay, so, so basically, one misstep, 18 months out, now... Joe Biden is beaten for 2024, right? Like, you know, a, a month out, it's clear to everybody that there's no, that, that you know, that his own doctors, his own researchers are saying, nope, we can't do it in this, in this, you know, in this, in this term. People are frustrated because they thought, you know, because for a whole lot of reasons, right? Because they, they're, reali they're realizing now it was rhetoric that, that, you know, that even though he was sincere, the reality was it, it was just rhetoric, right? We, we know that at, at this point, the month out. And his own people saying we're 18 months out at least, right? So at that point he loses. This is this is what we're talking about today, all right? Joe Biden loses the election. Right? It doesn't even matter to do, right? Then what happens is on J Saturday, January 20th, 2024. That's the date, okay? Remember it now because it's the future of the Democrat Party. It's one very distinct future of the Democrat Party is what I'm about to say, okay? On January 20th, right? Uh, on Saturday, January 20th, 2024, here's what happens. Joe Biden is no longer president. There's a new president. And one single child dies 
of cancer, okay? Here's what happens. Because of the recklessness of this promise, because, in my opinion, Joe Biden promised something that he had no control to deliver, right? I, I, I think that. I, that is my opinion now. I don't have the facts for that. We're going to see if I'm right or not, right? That's my prediction. I think that it's going to become very clear very soon that this is all rhetoric, right? All right. So here's what happens. At this point, one single American child dies, right, of, of cancer on Saturday January 20th, 2024, and that's almost guaranteed because 8 million people a year die from it, right? That child's name, that child's death will be permanently, indelibly stamped on the face of Joe Biden, right? But not just his. His legacy will be destroyed, right? His own name will be destroyed. His dynasty, any ability for any of his children to run for president in the future or, or even for any public office utterly destroyed, right? And here's the important part. The Democrat Party, not destroyed in my opinion. Two things happen. I think there will be 20 years of payment for what for for the recklessness that Joe Biden exhibited upon the uh, upon the American Democrat Party, right? One, there'll be so much disgust and outrage, right? That at that point it will be clear that Joe Biden used the tears of American mothers whose children were dying of cancer as fuel for his political campaign rocket, right? And everybody will look at this and they will be so disgusted and outraged and furious, right? And rightfully so, right? That essentially, you know, Joe Biden's name will be mud forever. His dynasty will be done, right? And then, additionally, I think there'll be two decades of payment for the Democrat Party, where essentially you'll have handed every single election to the Republicans. There's also one more possibility for the Democrats. They'll have, you know, received such a savage blow from someone within their own party, right, that they will, ne they will then, uh, they will open the door for a third party. Now, I know, I know that sounds a little unusual, right, but don't forget... Less than ten, less than ten years ago, the Tea Party was a very real concern in America. Very real concern in America, right? So you know, and and this is exactly the type of event that can open that up, right? So, in addition to that, the reason why I'm saying this would be so devastating. This is the sincere path. This is if he's being sincere, and there's a single misstep. The likelihood, which is incredibly likely. Right? It's incredibly likely that even being sincere and even having uh, knowledge from the best doctors and best researchers in the world right now, which it's likely that Biden has, right, that you could still misstep and fail to cure cancer, right? And your president, Lee, which you had promised would equal a cure for cancer, which you had then made sure that everyone who was a cancer ally or who had cancer had no ability to vote for anyone but you because they couldn't bet the lives of their friends and families and mothers and sisters and brothers and fathers and boyfriends and girlfriends, right? That they couldn't bet those lives on a candidate that did not promise a, a cure to cancer. When it becomes cure, clear that you got your presidency, but the people you promised a cure for cancer didn't get that cure for cancer, and, and and these are, you know, weeping mothers, you know, at the funeral of their dead child. And it's just going to be one. It's going to be one child. One child's name, one child's death is all it will, will take. It'll be stamped right on the face of Joe Biden. It'll be stamped on his dynasty. And it will be stamped on the Democrat Party for 20 years, right? That's how long it'll take to forget the most outrageous, most reckless, most foolhardy promise that has ever been made in American politics, which in my opinion, I don't have proof yet, in my opinion, that's what Joe Biden did on Tuesday, January 11th, 2019, right? Uh, it, it is, I've never seen anything like this, right? This, this, is, this is hubris at a level that is difficult to even imagine, right? And so, so that's my point is, we are in a new day. The primaries have fundamentally changed. Um, 
And, and basically, you know, to me, I truly believe the Democrats, the Democrat Party's best option right now, right, is to assume that Joe Biden is sincere and go to him and say, listen, we understand you're sincere. We understand that you think that your election will cure cancer for the world. But the reality is, if you fail, this will mean 20, 20 years of, of, of condemnation for the entire party. Uh, it, it's unlikely we'll be able to elect another president for two decades, right? If, if a single misstep happens and you put on the Democrat Party a conga line of mothers whose children have died from, uh, you know, from, from cancer, if there's just one child who's, you know, who's, who's, whose grave is shown and whose mother's face is put on television on the first day after your election where you cure, where you failed to cure cancer, that's it, right? And we can't bet two decades of progress on your roll of the dice. And I think then what happens is no one has the right to um, forbid him from, forbid Joe Biden from running. He has a right as an American citizen to run for president. He's, he's checked every box. He's done what's necessary to run. But I think the hot, you know, uh, no less than three, maybe as high as seven of the highest officials, Nancy Pelosi, uh, you know, every Democrat, every Democrat you can get, just trot them out and, uh, and, and one by one go to him individually and privately and say, please, for the sake of this party, do not bind, do not lash us to your fate, right? Do not, do not doom the, the Democrat party to, 20 years of no ability to elect a president. No, and, and frankly, no, uh, very little ability to even let's uh, elect senators or, or congressmen because our party will be synonymous with broken promises to American mothers whose children died of cancer, right? They are. So just this week, John Stewart went and yelled at I'm not, that's not, it's not an exaggeration. It's exactly what happened at senators and congressmen said they were disrespectful, said they weren't doing their jobs. He had the right, he had the ability to do that. And the reason he had the ability to do that is because he was talking for, um, for 9-11, uh, you know, first responders, survivors, they're untouchable in America. You can't list a hand to them. You can't say anything derogatory about them, Right. Or you you will you will suffer the wrath of the public, right? Well, guess what? Americans, American mothers whose children have died of cancer, they're exactly the same, right? And right now, Joe Biden has made this race a question of whether he is using the tears of mothers whose children are dying of cancer as rocket fuel for his political campaign rocket, right? It's incredible. I've never seen anything like this. I truly believe right now that the DNC, the Democrat Party, needs to request respectfully, frequently, adamantly to uh, Joe Biden. You've scattered the bones, man. It, it's it's over. Please remove yourself from the from the primary. And because the reality is, if you don't deliver on this, it destroys everything we've built. Right? It you know for for two decades, not permanently. I, I don't think it would. I don't think it would get rid of the Democrat Party permanently, unless the third party. A third party executed perfectly and replaced them, which is possible. That's my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion on, on the subject. Please let me know in the comments below and have a wonderful day.